Hey, Blue Max. People like this game. I don't. But because people like it, they love to hear that you can play this on the Mega 65. In Mega 65, Go 64 mode on the Mega 65 core. There is a little glitch. It's uh, above the view and the lives and the score. But yeah, hey, it, it's all readable. You can play it. The glitch is fine. I can I can live with that. So good. Centipede seems to be running fine. Can't find anything wrong with this. Just works. And I suck at it. This is an attempt to load Frantic Freddy, one of my first games on the Commodore 64. Sadly, all it does is this, and I've tried multiple versions and they all hang. Not sure if it is because of the crack throws and there is still a version out there that works, but I, I went on and this is not 9083, but I think 9091. 2019. Frantic Freddy 2, an unofficial sequel. So sad, it also doesn't work. So sad. This is Xerons, if I say it correctly. I had some problem getting this to work. The thing is, the enemies only go down based on the timing of your CIA clock. And if you don't have a battery installed in your Mega 65, like I did for the longest time, the enemies don't come down, which was quite funny to see. <laughs> anyway, install the battery, enemies come down, gameplay's fine. Great stuff. Frogger. Well, at least a version of Frogger. This wasn't this one was released by the Parker Brothers in 1983. There is actually a version released in 1982 by Cheryl Online, if I'm not mistaken, that I like much better. It plays just a bit better and looks a bit better. This is not my favorite version, but hey, it works. And the other Frogger that I mentioned also works. I just couldn't include it in this video because it's not, not 1983. Ugh. Next! Q-Bird by Parker Brothers, released in 1983. Really good version, really good port of the arcade, really fun to play. But on the Mega 65, Mega 65 core, in go 64 mode, just a black screen. Luckily there are some alterna uh, uh, alternatives, I can speak English. For example, Expert. This is such a shitty game, but it plays, that's, that's the thing. So yeah, if you can't do Qbert on the C64 dedicated core for some reason, try Hexpert. It, it's really shitty though. Look, just. I also have another one. Humph Humphrey. Humphrey. Well, it's technically a bit different. Uh, there is a different mechanic to it. It makes it a bit more strategic instead of more arcadish. Arcadish is that the word? Uh, like it as a kid for some reason, but it is there's some luck involved, and it's actually also not that good. <laughs> not that good. So yeah, maybe we can get Qbert in the future. Who knows? Staying with the theme, Juice Metronix. It's a cool game, but the uh, intro in front of each level is way too fast. The game also plays a bit faster than I'm used to, but it still plays. And actually, the increase in speed makes it so that your input. Feels like it's a bit more fluid, more faster, less uh, uh. nothing sexual. So yeah, it definitely plays in the Mega 65 and I love it. Goo stuff. Next! Mm, suicide Strike by Tronix. The game runs, but the sprites are hiding behind this orange shit. And that is normally not the case. Uh, I looked at the registers while the game was running, and the background priority settings are good. So the Fig 4 is doing it wrong here? I have no clue. Fail for me. Ah, oh, Pharaoh's Curse. Love it. The sense of exploration in this game, with all these multi screens. You can play the game three times, win three times, and each time it becomes more bigger, more rooms to explore, treasures to find. Each treasure gives you an extra life, so helps keep the thing going if you're good at finding treasure and exploring the different screens. 
Great game! Plays fantastically on the Mega 65 as well. Can recommend it to everyone. Gorf has a bit of an issue. If you enter level 1, you immediately die. Then you got to level 2. No problem at all. You can finish it. Got to level 3. Level 4. And it all works. Except then after level 4 you loop the game. Go back to level 1. And you die again. So weird. So level 1 is just unplayable. You always lose a life. Making this game not good on the Mega 65 core. But you can play it on the C64 dedicated core of course. Still. Fail. I should mention that we already covered a couple of 9083 games on the channel. For instance. Pit Stop. Super Pipeline. Forbidden Forest. Bandits, Eckbert, and last but not least, Wizard of War, my favorite game from the year. These videos go a little more into the details with these games. Feel free to check them out after finishing this 9083 video. Back to the list. This is Gritter. It's a bit of a simple game. It's based on the arcade Amidar, I can assume, or it's based on Kid Grid. Kid Grid is an awesome game, same style but much better, released in 1982, so not included in the video, I even didn't test it yet. This game is quite simplistic of course, so naturally it works on the Mega 65. I don't think many people play this, but I played it as a kid, so included it anyway. This is Hunter, or Ice Hunter. The title screen works, however, if we start the game, it breaks with a syntax error. Pandora's box seems really promising, it goes a bit too fast. It's a common thing with the Mega 65, a lot of the games run a tiny bit faster if they are not synced to the uh, roster interrupts. So the CPU is probably handling instructions a bit faster, handling more instructions per second. Don't know what it is, but at least yeah. Especially these older games don't use roster interrupts to time all the code. Yeah, then, then you get this stuff, it goes too fast. Anyway, Pandora's box, it seems everything is fine. Everything seems fine. Although, and I did a video about the gameplay, so you can check that out. Uh, it's this corner, we'll link it here. It's a compilation of Mr. Micro games. And Pandora's box is one of those, and this is 1983 as well. So. Thought like I will include it because it's, it's kind of the most interesting Mr. Micro game from that time, and it all seems to work except if you shoot a bug, you lock it in a collar and it moves to the side. And if the collars match with the side and the bug the collars match, then it should die. The stupid bug should die. And in the Mega 65, it just goes through. You can't score points. You can't kill them. <laughs> it's useless. It's a complete fail. So sad. Moving on to Scramble. This is one of the versions. There is another version out there. I don't like that one. I played this as a kid. It's also not a great version, I have to say. The scroller is it's just not a perfect scroll. And the C64 can do better than this. But yeah, it plays with the Mega 65. And this is the game I played as a kid. So yeah, win for me. But because the scroller is uh, not perfect, it's like going block by block, 8 pixels a time. It does make you a little crazy because also the Mega 65 is running this game of course a bit faster again. And that is not helping the game. So although it was a bit, uh, I had to really focus at some point of the screen so that I could, could play. But that's playable, so good. But not perfect. This is Star Ranger. I included this because I thought it was a different game. Ended up playing this for a little bit, it was kind of cool, kind of cool game. However, every time you finish the level 1 nasties, you go to the level 1 bombers. And there you out of the blue die. Uh, there should be enemies coming, but you don't see them. So either the invisible enemies hit you, or some collision thing wrongly triggers, I don't know. Oh bye! Spoiler alert, it plays on the Mega 65 perfectly! But the best thing about this game, and this happens on the original hardware as well, I mean, this is not a Mega 65 issue, is with the music. I love how the music loops. Here, listen with me. Oh, 
Oh, that pause. <laughs> That's how legendary. It's always stuck in my head. I, I, I need to hear this tune like that with a pause. It's crazy. Popeye. Recommended. Good game. Save me, Brave Knight! It's quite an obscure game, I think, but I love it. There are three screens. Uh, starting with the first one, you need to pick the log with your lance. Poking with your lance is nothing sexual, of course. Once you break the log, you go inside. You have a little battle with some witches and some bats. It's almost Halloween. I should have picked this game instead of Cauldron for the Halloween special. Moving on to the next screen, we fight some... I think they are dragons, from the looks of it. Dragons, I guess. And you just have to know what to do, then it's a pretty easy game, actually. Oh yeah, and at the end, when we kill all the dragons, we need to select a door. If you select the wrong one, yeah, then... That happens. Recommend it to check it out sometime. Although you have to get into the controls the and, 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 the, and the mechanics a little bit, but... Hey, you're a retro gamer. You can do it. Jungle Hunt. As you can tell, it looks fantastic on the Mega 65, and it also plays fantastic. Here we go. Well, at least the timer still runs, so that is good. And I suppose I don't need to explain what this game is. Oh, Jeffrey, please do! Well, it's Donkey Kong, of course. Duh. And this version by Atari Soft seems to work perfectly fine. Punchback. I heard this is quite a popular game. I I never played it myself as a kid. I only picked this up recently after being recommended when they saw me playing something else, something shitty. And this game is pretty good. And also the nice thing about it is it plays in the Mega 65. The shitty thing I was playing is also a 1983 game. It's Based on the same stuff. Robin to the rescue. And there is no sound. Pretty shitty compared to Hunchback. And another thing that is shitty is it doesn't play good on the Mega 65 because you die if you don't move. You need to keep moving. If you stop, for some reason, you die. It doesn't play in the Mega 65, so that's a fail. Hunchback though, the other one is good. Oil's well. Love it. Also one of my favorites, I have so many favorites, god damn it. And I like to think that I'm great at this game, that I'm doing really well. Of course there are always people that played it way much more than me. And they do really well at it, but hey. I can now also practice on the Mega 65, god damn it, because it plays. Yes. Recommend it. My daughter, uh, she played it when she was about three years old, I guess. She loved it. <laughs> There's no appeal for me here, but hey, it plays on the Mega 65, and maybe you can get your kid to play something on the Mega 65 as well with this simple game. It's nice for that. Works. Save New York by Joe Jetson. This is best played with two players in my opinion, or at least that is how I always played it and we had loads of fun with this, but we never actually played the game for real. So I actually also don't know if there is any progress to be made here other than yeah, shooting those aliens that come down. What we always did is like just shoot the buildings, molest everything, uh, go in the subway, start shooting each other, uh, have a dogfight. That's what we did in the two player mode. Uh, maybe I should actually give this game a good try sometime. I didn't do it on the Mega 65, I just tested if it works. Seems to be working, so... Let's move on to Spy Hunter. There's a little glitch down below that stays there all game. She's also making it hard to play the game, you will see in a bit. First, the game asks you for key or joy, so you select joy with the J on the keyboard. And then what? Well. In the glitch bar it actually asks you to choose between novice and expert, N or E. I picked N for novice because I'm a novice. Game starts up and then 
the, the display where your score, your time, and also your power-ups is messed up. I hate it. I can't play it like this. So, this is a fail. So sad. It's a good game. Time Runner. It's one of those uh, Kid Grid-like thingies. I forgot the arcade game already that it is probably based on. But hey, it seems to play on the Mega 65, except... There is no sound. Now I double checked the same version that I tested here on WinVice. There the sound comes on, but what I think kills it for the Mega 65 is this special ring mod FX thingy. It's quite hard on the ears also if you play it really loud. And I think the Mega 65 just stops outputting sound after that or something, I don't know. Uh, it's anyone's guess here. Weird. But yeah, if there is no music, no sound, that's a fail for me. It's, it doesn't play in the Mega 65, no. Eh. Sticks. There's not a lot I can say about this game, other than it plays in the Mega 65. There's not a lot of sound, there's not a lot of music, none at all. But that's okay, because it's also not on the original C64, so it just matches up, I guess. I mean, you can play it, you can have fun with it. I suck at it though. Works!